what is this campaign's favorite moment? So far? In yeah. Campaign three. Oh, it's tough. They are a chaotic group. Oh, they came I, out swinging. I thought Mighty Nine was chaos. Yeah. And, and then and then whatever. Hold this my group beer. Is, <laughs> oh my goodness. I. It's, I'm hard pressed to pick a particular moment. Uh. I will say one of the things that I'm really enjoying about it, to kind of sidebar from that, is Ashley Johnson, who in previous campaigns was jumping in and out because she was filming in New York, and it was always a challenge. She felt like she was missing out on parts of the story. She always felt a little discombobulated when she came back, mm -hmm. uh, and she played amazing characters, but they were always characters that she had to kind of like jump back and in, back into and back out of and back into over periods of time, and you know, she, we talked about that frustration that she had. And so having her here since day one, and she is unleashed as Fern. She is just living her best life as this character and throwing me curveballs left and right. And just, I, I never thought I needed Ashley Johnson as the agent of chaos before, but it is everything I wanted in the campaign and, and has led to many, many very memorable moments already. That friendship with Laudna, like with Marisha, the character is like, I love Laudna because Laudna is so creepy and mm -hmm. Vincent Price and just just devouring the <laughs> creepiness all around her. But it is a very sweet soul. That's why I bring up Vincent Price. Mm -hmm. And then I say Ashley Johnson's character uh, speaks so polite and is so nice. And there's such a level of nefariousness going on <laughs> yeah. between them and Tent. They are almost opposites. They very much are. It's such good chemistry. Oh, and, and we never knew how it was going to come together. Everyone created their characters separately, except for like Fern had been in Exandria Unlimited. Yeah. But even then, it was kind of like she was feeling out the character and you know really kind of finding it. Um, this particular combination of characters in Campaign Three has has just allowed this 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 dynamic between them that is unique and exciting, in that I have no idea what's going to happen next. As a DM, I'm like, I'm having to keep up with them because this is crazy. It's a bit, yeah, it looks like a marathon. <laughs> Fresh cut grass. A thousand percent. I was like, those first few episodes, I'm like, Sam, you are trying to end a friendship. <laughs> when he sent me, when he finally like made the character and sent me the email, I was like, this one I'm making, I'm like, what, what are you doing, Sam? He's like, and I want a custom subclass. I'm like, of course, of course you do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's, I think, I think especially with the Mighty Nine campaign, which was wonderful and heartfelt and crazy and all those kind of things. It was, it definitely had a, like kind of an undertone of, of darkness at times and kind of a seriousness. Not to say this campaign won't go to those same places because I definitely want to drag it to them. But I think because the campaign ended on, on a very like epic heavy note in a lot of senses, yeah. campaign three definitely was a lot of like the pendulum swinging the other direction. Uh, and so the players are living off some steam. The players are having some fun. They're, they're in those early levels too where, where the stakes aren't quite so high so they can really play around. And I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. It's so fun. Uh, yeah, it's hard to pick a single moment. Uh, but I will say... I will say there's a character early, very early in the campaign that that disappears, that, that, that vanishes from the story for the foreseeable future <laughs> for uh, very unfortunate circumstances uh, that was intentional by Travis's mind to, uh, to introduce a character that he intended to play. And uh, his subtle trolling of that entire experience as being his brainchild was really fun to kind of coordinate with. Uh, you know what? No, I think I think my favorite. I think, yeah, it's too hard to pick. It's too hard to pick. I wish I could. Too tough of a question. Yeah, I've broken you. You have. You have destroyed <laughs> me. You have. You have rendered me down to my base elements. I am useless. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why. I like, that's why I like campaign three. Is like you guys are so comfortable now. They went all for it, they and did. that's been very clear. It's it's so, and that that's the baseline of it all. Like. We're not trying to, we're not trying to make the best content. We're not trying to tell the best story. We're trying to have the most fun we can at that table. This is still at its very 
core, no matter how wild these, these opportunities keep happening with Critical Role and we get to do some really incredible things, we firmly still hold to and firmly believe as these things happen that the reason any of this is happening is at the core of it all, we just care about each other and we want to have a great time together. You know, the very, the beating heart of Critical Role is us telling the story for us and for each other. Every Thursday for us is our escape. All the rest of the stresses and 70 hour work weeks and you know, and, and intense anxieties melt away when it's just you know, the eight of us at that table. Nine of us with uh, Ravi coming and jumping in for this campaign for a bit. And it's, it's just our, it's our opportunity to, to have fun together. And as long as we hold true to that, then everything else will fall into place. If you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.